hair habits are actually more important than what products you use. No matter how good the product is, if you're breaking your hair, if your hair is too tight in a style or what have you, your products are pretty much null and void. If you want to argue about it, let's talk, but it is what it is. This is a question that I've gotten over the years and the question is, can we all grow long natural hair? <laughs> That's the big question, isn't it? And the answer is actually yes and no. And I'm going to explain why. You want to really listen to this because honestly, we've been lying to ourselves about, oh, I can't grow hair because it's in my genes. And people are using genetics as an excuse to not grow long hair. Girl, if you're lazy, just say that. However, if you do want to grow long hair, you better listen up because I've got some things to say. Now, before you put your short hair down to genetics, there's a few other things you have to consider. Of course, it is known that genes do play a major role in how long you grow your hair, um, you know, how fast you grow your hair, the thickness, the color of your hair, the texture of your hair, the type, the curl, how straight everything is genetics right however there's other things to consider particularly when it comes to length retention or you know how well you actually end up growing your hair the things that are really affected by genes when it comes to how long you grow your hair is pretty much the terminal length and how fast or the rate at which you grow your hair so terminal length is pretty much the longest your hair can get to and that is actually genetically determined the other thing is how fast right some people grow an in uh, not a really well some people yeah i guess an inch but the average person is 0.5 some people may grow here a little bit faster than that or a little bit slower than that per month but on average it's about 0.5 um, inches per month of hair growth so as you can imagine some people have got a terminal length of shoulder length bra strap mid back waist length or beyond that's determined by genetics however things like your hormones right when you're in postpartum for example your hair automatically goes into um shedding and you just lose a lot of hair because those hormones are going back to their normal state and your hair is no longer on steroids and you lose quite a bit of hair that is not something you can control that's something that is natural it'll happen and the hair does stabilize itself once the hormones once the hormones settle down as well things like stress can actually affect hair growth if you're stressed girl your blood and your body is not thinking oh let's take all the blood we need to the the hair is thinking let's get that brain working let's get that digestive system let's try to get more hair um, rest or let's try to pretty much keep the critical organs or the major organs at optimum function so stress is one thing that you want to avoid if hair growth is a goal of yours lifestyle as we know already exercise is major when it comes to hair growth because of course blood circulation blood flow right so if you don't exercise as much i mean you could be still growing hair very well but if you exercised you might actually take that a much higher so lifestyle does play a role in hair growth as well now your health Things like low iron or anemia, that can super, super like, really affect your hair growth because anemia and low iron just means you've got less blood to circulate. And of course, who's worrying about hair when there is a heart to take care of? Nutrition, not having enough protein, not drinking enough water, all those things could affect not only how long you grow your hair, but also the quality of your hair. Environmental factors such as the weather, how hot it is, how cold it is, how windy it is, all those pretty much affect not necessarily the growth but the like how your hair is maintained once it's out of the scalp so to speak and the big one the biggest one of them all which is pretty much the biggest problem we have as naturals or as women of color and that's hair habits scalp massages having a simple routine that you can be consistent with having quality products that will, you know, help you manage your hair, protective styling, you know, cleansing and massage, all those things actually play a role in how long you grow your hair and the quality of your hair, actually. And let's not even negate the over manipulation that we do, the over washing, the use of harsh shampoos that we do, protective styles that are not even protective, tight at the edges, breaking your hair, brittle hair, hair that's not moisturized, those things, honestly, honestly, Hair habits are actually more important than what product you use. No matter how good the product is, if you're breaking your hair, if your hair is too tight in a style or what have you, 
your products are pretty much null and void. If you want to argue about it, let's talk, but it is what it is. And we know that poor hair habits lead to alopecia, you know, balding, shedding, receding hairline, breakage, brittleness, split ends, mid shaft splits, single strand knots. I mean, hair damage, heat damage, like <laughs> the list is endless. So I don't know if you're seeing what I'm saying here, but how we look after our hair is actually more important than genetics. Your genetics are what they are. You can't change them. So let that be. Just focus on a healthy routine and see for yourself whether or not you can actually grow hair very long or very healthy, whatever the goal is for yourself. How to maximize hair growth? Well, get exercising. Put in that water. Hydration is super important. Nutrition, I've already spoken about that. Your protein, your, you know, complex carbs, your low GI foods, your fruit and vegetables, those are going to be super healthy and um, are going to really just nourish the body and also the hair or the follicles so that you produce good hair. Scalp care, keep your scalp clean, keep your scalp vibrant, keep your scalp positive, positively stimulated. Adopt a simple routine. You don't have to have 15 steps, just a few steps that you can follow and be consistent with. That is the key. Gentle detangling. Girl, gentle detangling. I personally am not going to be using combs anymore, maybe to part my hair every once in a while. However, the combing I'm going to put on standby or actually eliminate for good because I have noticed that each time I use a comb and a brush my hair, I experience a setback, whether via single strand knots, via split ends, via tangles, via breakage, there'll be some kind of setback. The minute I forget about the what the the combs and brushes, my hair just retains the length. My hair just retains that length. And girl, it's it's lovely to see. Just try it. Experiment for yourself and just let the combs go for a little bit and come and tell me. Come and tell me about it. Use raw oils and butters. Use raw oils and butters. Our hair loves oils and butters. Our hair loves conditioners. Our hair loves glycerin, humectants use those things most of people most of the people with um kinky type for hair are actually high porosity so we like the weighing down of hair we like the smoothing of the cuticle we love the closing of the cuticle so do all that heavy products we love those they're going to help close your cuticle and maintain moisture for longer increase manageability uh reduce freeze uh increase lubrication just all round good for your hair honestly you want to argue let's talk but girl i know what i'm talking about because i've had some setbacks and this has worked for me getting me where i am right now at waist length eliminate heat i say eliminate because i have eliminated it from my routine or from my hair care um if you can't do it maybe just use it very 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 sparingly but if you can girl just cut it out it's not benefiting you when i say heat i mean direct heat blow dryers curling irons that kind of heat. You can still deep condition with heat. You can still moisturize and hydrate with heat. However, you're not applying the heat directly to your hair. Protective styling. I've spoken about this. Everyone has spoken about this. It's not news. Lock that moisture in. As in when you put your hair in twists, braids, what have you, tuck those ends in. They're going to love that moisture. I'm telling you, this is game changing for me. So I hope it is for you as well. Try it out. But if you use things like synthetic hair, I've shown you guys how to moisturize your hair while in, in synthetic hair or extensions like this one. So check those out. However, the best is really just to protect your style with your own hair. The next one is learn from successful people. Learn from people that have been able to grow their hair long. That is the evidence that something they have done, something along the way, something in their journey has worked to the extent that they've been able to achieve what you're trying to achieve, okay? Not everyone has the same goal of long hair, I understand, but this channel is about long hair. I like I like long hair. <laughs> Most of the people that watch are wanting long hair, long healthy hair. Um, so follow and learn from people that have actually shown you results. Now, many people will try to sell the narrative that we can all grow long, thick hair and they'll advertise their super thick hair and their super long hair to entice you and make you buy products. This is not what I'm about. Um, I'm not selling you anything per se. I mean, I do have merchandise, so definitely go check that out. But it's not really hair related, right? I'm not trying to grow your hair. Um, and even if I was, guys, the evidence is there. I've been able to grow my hair via the techniques that I'm sharing with you on this channel. So 
don't buy the lie i guess that everyone can grow the same thickness or the same length and we can all get to waist length and tailbone length and thigh length that's not really the case just grow your best hair grow the longest hair that you can and the only way to find that out is to actually try it out do it really well and see how long or how much length you can actually retain and of course while i'm saying that not everyone will be able to achieve the same amount of thickness and length however we are all able to achieve a certain goal okay all of us have to discover for ourselves for ourselves what that um, length or that terminal length is so i used to think that i am shoulder length because that's pretty much what i was all my life as a child etc and people consider that long hair Fast forward today, 2024, girl, it is waist length and growing. So if I put it in my hair that this is long hair and these are my jeans and they're great and this is the best I can do, I would have never achieved the waist length that I have today. Um, so a lot of people that see me pull my hair up to my waist, they're like, oh, is it, not, is it not just the jeans though? Like, aren't you just colored? Do you not just have some colored in you? Oh, that's why you grow hair that long. And that is... a one of the biggest pet peeves I have about natural hair, like if you have failed to grow your hair or retain your length, goodbye, that's fine. What, you know, do you, but <laughs> don't try to make other people believe that it's genetics. It's not all genetics. You've never, if you haven't put in the work, you haven't tried it for yourself, you haven't been consistent for years. I say years because it takes years to grow hair. It has taken me six plus years to get to waist length of consistency. Yes, there have been some setbacks, but consistency, all right? <laughs> I'm getting distracted, but don't allow people to put in your head that you can't grow your hair and your hair, oh, it's jeans and we can't all grow hair and whatever. Like, this is not what we're here. We're here for people that actually want to test this for themselves and actually discover what that terminal length is. And the only way to do it is to implement the good practices and actually see your hair thriving and let it decide when it's ready to stop growing. Then you can say, okay, that's my terminal length. A lot of us will sort of plateau at the bra strap, mid back length, and we think that's our plateau, but that is when you're supposed to zero down on your consistency. That's when the protective style, the protective style and the moisture, the protein is at a whole new level. You don't miss, you don't play around with your hair, you don't get anyone touching your hair. Yeah, it's, it's pretty intense, but you know your goal and you know what you're trying to get at. So if you're at that plateau stage, don't be discouraged. You just need to zero in and really just not, because now you're dealing with ends that are probably four plus years. They're very old. So you're dealing with very fragile hair. So that's why the hair breaks quite easily at that stage and it just wants to stay at that stage. So in order to push past that stage, it's pretty much handling falsy hair like silk. That's why I say ditch the cons, ditch the heat, and yeah, adopt a simple routine. It's also important to know that people from the same family can have very different hair. You could have someone with waist length from the same family and their sister or cousin or brother or mother just has neck length for years. And that just goes to show that you may have the same genes, but the practices are impacting how well you retain your length. Another thing is that you could have super, super long hair and it's very, very unhealthy. Or you could have someone with super short hair and it's super, super healthy. So length is not necessarily health. However, a lot of the times to get to that length, to extensive amounts of length, it takes healthy practices. So it's very rare to see people. And this is like stringy, stringy, just little hairs that are getting to thigh length, but the rest of the hair is at the nape, uh, at the nape or at the neck then of course, then that's, you know, we don't want that. So just bear that in mind. At the end of the day, I just encourage you guys to enjoy your hair, enjoy your journey, embrace your texture, just get excited about seeing results with your hair. You know, adopt a routine where it's not work. It becomes part of self-care. It becomes something that you look forward to, something that's pleasurable and relaxing and fun, something you look forward to. Uh, there's been a narrative that has made natural hair looks like really hard and impossible to look after but i promise you like there are things that you can do to just make your natural hair much much more exciting i have done a video sharing with you guys how i have adopted a one hour wash day i wash once a month it's a breeze i look forward to it i even miss wash day so check that out
And also guys, make sure to not put pressure on yourself to look like the other natural, look like the next natural, have hair like that one, what have you? No, no. Like embrace that unique self, embrace that unique color of your hair, that unique texture, the unique curl pattern, the unique density. Even fine hair is beautiful. There's a girl here that I used to watch some good 10 years ago. She had the long, longest hair ever and very thin. She used to actually struggle with alopecia and... Um, like thinning around her edges you know but she had long hair she had beautiful hair so fine hair is also beautiful it also has its own beauty and we need to embrace accept that and be excited about it and not always be looking for volume and always be looking for thickness and how to thicken my hair maybe your genes have determined your thickness have determined your density so you know there's not not much you can do about that but you can just embrace and enjoy it all right, some of the advantages about fine hair that I find personally is just the ability to do slick ponytails easily, right? I've tried to do a ponytail before. I think I've done it once on this channel. I almost cried. It's a lot of work with the hair. Um, but with finer hair, you can do that easily. You can actually look quite cute uh, doing styles like that. So embrace fine hair. I personally know that I can achieve waist length because I've gotten to waist length. Am I going to continue growing my hair? Of course, I want to see how far it can go, particularly around the tailbone area. If it starts getting to my butt area, I'm going to cup it because I don't think I can deal with hair that long, but who knows how I'll be feeling at that at that point. What I did to get to waist length, I looked after my scalp pretty well. Scalp massages, I use essential oils on my scalp. I've shared all this. I've shared a whole scalp routine with you guys. Check it out if you haven't. Uh, I've adopted a simple routine. I do not miss my deep conditioning and my protein treatments. Guys, high porosity hair loves protein. Even if you think you're protein sensitive, if you're protein sensitive, the more protein you need. You know why? Because protein sensitivity means that your hair takes on a lot of protein at one given point, which means it's very porous, which means it has a lot of holes in the hair, which means those holes or those gaps need to be filled by protein. I need to be paid for what I'm saying to you guys right now. Protein. If you're protein sensitive, you need more protein. There are ways around how to not get that hard or tough, brittle feeling. I'll do a video about it. Look out for that one. It's all about how much protein you're using, how often you're using it, and what kind of protein you're using on your hair. I trim my hair as needed. I don't trim on a routine. I don't trim every three months, every six months. I trim when I need the hair to be trimmed. Um, and this has helped me retain a lot of length. What I do in the meantime is to just make sure that my hair doesn't need a trim in the first place. And that's to secure those ends. That's to make sure to moisturize the ends, hydrate the ends, which is another thing that I've done to get to waist length. I've already told you guys, dish the combs. Fingers, best friends. All right, guys, I've got a few questions for you guys in this video that I want you to answer in the comment section below. The first one is, have you felt pressure to achieve a certain hair goal, such as length or thickness? Let me know if yes and why and you know how you're sort of handling that. The next question is, are you confident wearing your hair as it is, wearing your natural hair, whether it be fine, not as dense, low density, high density, you know, high porosity, low porosity. We're mostly high. I'll just say high porosity, okay? Um, and also, do you have family members that have got super long hair and you find yourself to just be struggling all the other way around? Let me know in the comment section. Guys, I hope this video was helpful. The big question, do genetics determine how long your hair gets? Yes and no. The most part is that yes, because of the terminal length, but more so than the terminal length is the habits and how you look after your hair and how you retain your length, okay? So focus on what you can actually change because you can't change your genes. Your genes are permanent. However, change your habits, change your routine, change how you're looking after your hair and... Don't just blame it on the jeans.